sometimes when we watch certain players, uh, they can bring up memories uh, of previous players from different eras uh, of our favorite team um, that we remember and we just it just kind of makes you smile. Um, and it makes you reminisce and get kind of nostalgic. Um, and is, is Devin DuVernay one of those players? And, and who does he possibly remind some Ravens fans of? His first question came from my guy, Serge, and appreciate you being a patron. He said, hey, Graven, glad to see you doing well despite the hurricane. Hope it didn't cause too much damage. I, I appreciate it, man. He said, I'll keep it short today. Does watching Devin DuVernay play kind of feel as exciting as watching Jacoby Jones? And Jacoby Jones, as we all know, um, he was special uh, for the Ravens. Um, he made a lot of plays. Uh, he made a lot of stuff happen. Um, and he was just, he was amazing. Um, now, initially, when I first read this question just now, I was thinking, no, they, um, they don't move the same. Um, they... They don't have any similar characteristics as far as the, the, the type of receivers or even returners that they are. Um, but then when I think about it, um, the big play, big, big plays at wide receiver. Jacoby Jones did that. He didn't get too many opportunities, but when he did, he made the most of it. And then being special in the return game. Devin DuVernay has been doing that so far this season. Um, he obviously got the kick return for a touchdown uh, in week two. Uh, but then he almost got the punt return for a touchdown in week three. He was so, 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 so close. What was that week two? I think it was week three. But either way. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and just somebody who was probably overlooked going into the season as a wide receiver. Um, but they have been still making plays at wide receiver early on uh, in this season. So I guess I can see how uh, watching Devin DuVernay could remind somebody uh, of Jacoby Jones. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Ain't no chance what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. Ain't no chance what I mean. Next question also came from a patron, my guy Jason E.G. He said, Engraven, something that's always confused me. Why isn't Lamar ever in any Nissan or Heisman House commercials? I think I've only seen him in one ever. You know, I'll be looking for him in those. Whenever they say, oh, it's the Heisman, guys. I'll be looking to see, okay, where Lamar is. I don't know. I don't know. So I don't know what the details of his, his sponsor deals are and all that stuff. So I, I couldn't answer that one. Next question came from my guy, Gareth. Um, he said, Engraven, hope you and your family are safe. I'll send my prayers and well wishes. Appreciate that, Gareth. Uh, my question, do you think we still need to trade for a wide receiver? I really do think we are set, but would love to know what you think. Thanks for reading my question. I wouldn't mind if they did. I don't think they will do. I mean, I don't think they will. Do they need to? It's not a glaring need, I wouldn't say right now. Um, but you just got to hope and make sure that uh, you keep your own guys involved um, and you just had them ready. Now, is... Ravens have, uh, no, Ravens haven't really been down. Um, yeah, they really haven't been down this season like that. Um, they're going to be tested. They're, they're, they're going to be tested a lot um, throughout this season. There's going to be times where they get down. Uh, and Bateman and Duvernay, these boys are going to step up like that. They should. But we're going to see. We're going to see. Um, it's going to be games where maybe maybe Mark Andrews doesn't go off. I know that's hard to see, but there may be times where, where Mark Andrews doesn't go off. Let's just see how that goes. And, and hopefully they do do their thing. Hopefully they do continue to do what they've been doing and make the most of all their opportunities. Um, because there's going to be some games where they don't get so many. There's going to be other games where they get a lot. And it's about what you do with it. So far, they've been doing a good job with it. Next question came from another patron, my guy Raymond. He said, hey, Raymond, hope you and the family are, are doing good. I uh, wanted to ask, what can we do on defense to help uh, lessen the pain of giving up so many yards? Don't get me wrong, at times uh, we look good, and at times we look bad. 
I love the way our offense is looking and our wide receivers are looking great. So what more can we do to help our defense do better? I think it's just a matter of, of, of gelling, a matter of them clicking, a matter of them continuing to understand the defense that much more. It's a brand new defense. And it's one thing to go over something that's brand new in practice. It's one thing to go over something that's brand new on an iPad. Uh, but it's much different when you're actually out there and you're not going against your teammates. You're not going against your own coaching staff. You're going against other dudes that's trying to make stuff happen for their team uh, as well. So it's just a matter of everybody understanding what they have to do, understanding their assignments, and being at the right place at the right time. This question came from our boy Phil. I appreciate you being a patron. He said, this is not Ravens related, but I have to make a point. When we go to play Cincinnati, I don't know if you or others have heard, but yesterday at the University of Cincinnati, the Dolphins had their walkthrough practice for tonight's Thursday game in Cincinnati, where today it was leaked and reported that students at the University of Cincinnati video recorded at least 10 formation plays during Miami's walkthrough practice, posted them on Twitter, and now they are being shown to the public. Uh, it's now being investigated by the NFL, and since Cincinnati is in our division, the Bengals organization better hope this doesn't happen to the Ravens when we go to Cincinnati to play them. Mm. Um, but I think uh, with that, they said that uh, the Dolphins, the plays that they were out there doing, they, they all had 12 men on the field. So maybe it was uh, Mike McDaniels just trolling. Speaking of the Dolphins, next question came from MRA. Said, what's up, Engraving? Much love. Wanted to speak about Tua in the league. He was obviously concussed the first game. Coming from me, a person who played the highest level of high school football in North Carolina and won rings at that level as well as playing at the college level, he should have sat for at least two to three games after that. Nonetheless, he could have died. Uh, we had the NFL come teach us numerous times about heads-up football, but they have obviously become hypocritical in their approach. Oh, you ain't no baby. It's business, baby. It's a, it's a nasty business. It's business, baby. Uh, he said, not to mention Devin DuVernay should have been out for that game versus the Patriots as well. I was surprised to see him playing. We have to do better. I know his fans, we want to see people play, or we want to call them tough if they come back and play, but it's not tough. It's stupid. It's life. Potentially death or CTE. Last thing I want to say is the same way Tua got concussed in the Hills, oh, in the Bills game uh, was exactly how Lamar got hurt in the playoffs. That play should be illegal. Um, I respect Lamar even more for, his, for actually letting his body heal when he gets hurt because the fans like it when you tough it out, but when you get hurt again after not letting yourself heal, you then are considered washed up and injury prone. Mm. Much love and gravy. Let me know what you think about this. Someone has to save the champions from themselves, right? Ooh. With the Devin DuVernay. Um, maybe, uh, and I know there are different like levels of concussions and whatnot. Devin DuVernay, I'm, I'm no doctor. His, it didn't seem like it was uh, one of those, it obviously wasn't tour-like. Um, he did come out, um, but he, when he went down, he just went down and he sort of like stayed down for a little bit. Um, so with his, I mean, I, I never expected him not to play in the following game. Because um, it, just, it just seemed like maybe he was just shaking up. Hey, it could have been a concussion too. I don't know. Uh, with Lamar, with Lamar, his way his head banged on the turf in that uh, in the Bills game. Um, you know, I was surprised. I was surprised that they actually they kept Lamar out of the game. I, I really was because again, I know NFL is a business, so I expected them to have him right back out there. Because again, Lamar's money. That's play. And it was a playoff game. So that's money. The same way they did with Patrick Mahomes versus the Browns in the playoffs. Patrick Mahomes apparently got a concussion. And I was like, oh, that's Patrick Mahomes. That's money for NFL. They took him out. And I was like, whoa, hold up, man. So, um, but yeah, with the whole tour situation, it was just reckless. It was reckless. Um, and I just, I didn't get it. It's weird. Because, yeah, they tour was obvious. Like, tour, it was bad. It was bad from jump. From the Bills game, like you mentioned. He got up and he was like wobbling and all that, wobbling some more. Uh, that, that, that was just nasty. But then he was out there a couple plays later and I'm like, what? And then, um, yeah, then he comes back out the, the following game and, oh, that was just, it's just scary. And, and with that, a head injury. Head injuries are the scariest ones, man. Because so much goes on up there, man. But that's, that's where everything gets his uh signals from from your brain 
So if you and and you you don't want to uh you don't want to see Tua go down this road. You don't want to see him be put down this road, down this path of getting concussions. Because we've seen players that that's happened to, and they they said no. Nah. So well, so some of them they like hey no I'm I'm calling it quits. And if a guy has like consistent concussions. It's never a good thing. Next question came from my boy, uh, Jonathan D. He said, what's going on in Graven? Hope everything is all good. I got two questions. First one, after these three games, I've been looking closely at the offensive line, and yes, we got hit really bad with injuries. And I know a lot of people are waiting on Ronnie Sandy to get back on the field, but let's take a look at something. As we know, Ronnie had two surgeries on his foot and hasn't played over two seasons, but I think Ravens are being cautious with his return, and here's why. Uh, coincidentally, Juwan James uh, started week one, and now he's out with a leg injury. Our swingman, Patrick McCarry, is out for now with leg injury. If we had rushed Ronnie back for week one or week two, we would, have, we would have been having a different conversation today. If you really look at it, I love the fact that we are not rushing him back yet. I think we should sign a left tackle for now. Have uh, Lele hold on to the position and have Ronnie come back maybe week six. Because if he was out there week one or week two, whew, let's just say I feel for the other guys. Uh, what do you think? Um, with that, I just think I just think Ronnie Stanley, yeah, they are being extra careful. Extra cautious um, because they've been down the rush Ronnie Stanley back road before uh, and they don't need to go back there again. Oh, that's all I think it is. They're being like extra careful, and especially since he had two surgeries um, last year. Uh, it, you just you want to be extra careful. You have a lot invested in him, too. Um, whenever you really invest uh, into something, you don't want to see it ruined. So I think that's that. That's all that it is. He said in the second question, do you think it's time to put Ben Cleveland at guard over Ben Powers? Because I'm not liking Ben Powers' performance in pass or run blocking. I feel that Ben Cleveland just needs reps right now and chemistry so we can unleash his true potential with the starters. Thanks to Graven. I'm sorry for the long message. No, it's all good, man. But Ben Powers, I don't know, man. I, I, uh, I never really look at him individually. Um, the last time I, I saw him individually, like really noticed him was when he was getting pushed back. But... You don't really hear his name called too often, um, but at the same time, again, I, I don't really pay attention to individual offensive linemen like that. So with something like that, um, I guess I would have to really like really look and really pay attention to the offense. Like if if it's a play and pressure gets through, and they like show the replay or something, I'm gonna be like, oh, okay, look who gave that up. Um, but live, at least for me. Because I'm live on a play. I'm looking at Lamar, looking at uh, wherever the ball is going, who is going to, um, what they're doing and whatnot. But the offensive line, I'm, I'm like glancing at them, but I'm really watching who got the ball in their hands. Um, so with, with Ben Powers, I mean, hey, if he can pass block, we the, the pass blocking has been all right. But, I mean, the, the run blocking, it, it can't be no worse, right? So... What would it hurt to throw Ben Cleveland in there? Next question came from my guy Dominic. He said, what's up, man? Hope everything is good uh, after this great team win. After Lamar's first three games this season, his price has just been rising and rising like inflation. Uh, he looks poised and locked in. Doesn't matter if it's running or passing. And I think he's getting more and more comfortable. With his stock steady rising after every game, do you think the Ravens would try to throw him an offer to uh, during the season before his price gets out of reach? I know he said he wants to wait until the end of the season to resign, but if the Ravens offer him something, he can't refuse. Do you think he takes it? Or um, did the Ravens already have that chance? I don't think he would take it. Because he, he he knows what's going on right now. He knows, again, like you mentioned, his price keeps going up. So, um, if you continue to do your thing, say for instance, if the Ravens offer him something right now, it could be a beautiful deal. Oh, it could be nice. It could be a real nice deal. And then he goes off week four, goes off week five, Plays phenomenal. Week six, seven, eight, and goes through the season has a wonderful season. But you already took the deal. Not that it would be a bad thing for him to take the deal, but he may look back and be like, "Man, I might have missed that on a lot more money uh, than I could have made from taking a deal early." And next question came from my guy Frank. He said, "Ain't great, and hope you and the family are doing well." So I just wanted to clear some stuff up. Is it still possible that the Ravens give Lamar his contract extension mid-season? Uh, see, y'all y'all on the same page. Uh, and if not midseason, when 2022 season ends. Uh, if that's the case, I don't understand why people are freaking out if this is Lamar's seat last season in Baltimore. I love Lamar, man, and don't want him to leave Baltimore because I believe he has just entered his prime. Okay, see, I thought this was going to be, I love Lamar, but, because that's the way it looked like it was going, but he said, I love Lamar, man, and don't want him to leave 
uh, because I believe he's entering his prime. Let's just hope the Ravens don't continue the trend of letting great players go entering their primes. Darius Smith, C.J. Mosley, etc. But they offered C.J. Mosley a deal, but it wasn't enough. So he went to somewhere where they would offer him enough. <laughs> yeah, you get what I'm saying. Let me know what you think. And again, I hope you and the family stay healthy and well. Appreciate that, Frank. Um, now, yeah, I think they, they, they could possibly offer him something. But I, like I said before, I, I, I just don't think that he would take it. Next question came from my guy, Manuel. He said, what's up, Engraven? Shout out from Mexico. You know I love Lamar, but I feel Bashadi is going to go broke because of him. If Lamar keeps playing like this, the price will go up to 300 mil or even over that mark just to keep Lamar in Baltimore. For as much as he didn't want to set a pet precedent on fully guaranteed contracts like the Browns, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Bashadi. You will know when Lamar brings you that trophy on your desk and tells me, pay me my money. Hey, ain't going to be no complaints over that. Ravens win the Super Bowl. Bashadi, hey, do what you got to do, my friend. Do what you got to do. Even the Ravens didn't win the Super Bowl. Bashadi, do what you got to do, my friend. So anyway, he said, uh, P.S., should we be surprised that Lamar is literally our offense? No. It's been that way for years. So, yeah, no shocker there. Uh, he's the passing the ball super effectively, and he's our running game. I know it's a team swell, but my, but my real question here is, when will the team rise to Lamar's level besides the wide receiver and Mark Andrews? Mm, I mean, you, you would hope that they could get start to get more out of the running game. And hopefully with J.K. Dobbins and Justice Hill, they will, and even the other guys too. But um, those guys have looked like our best runners, uh, and I, I think it's no coincidence because they're the most familiar with the Ravens system too. But um, you just hope that you can get more contribution out of them, too, out of, out of the run game as a whole. And the last question came from my guy, Avery. He said, Steve Bishotti and the Ravens front office are walking on thin ice. I'm tired of all the uh, conversation about Lamar Jackson's contract, but there is one perspective I haven't heard many people bring up. Skip Bayless implied Monday morning that the Ravens front office could be trying to string out Lamar for as long as possible so that he stays on his mission and ultimately wins the Super Bowl. We all know how motivated Lamar is just to prove people wrong. The Ravens might be using his own mental makeup to produce a Super Bowl out of him before paying him the bread. The Ravens probably feel like paying up is inevitable even if the price goes up. With the physical work Lamar has put in during the offseason combined with how mentally motivated he is, the Ravens may have unlocked the most dangerous version of Lamar Jackson. That's a good point. Like, who, who isn't motivated by money at their job? If you are told at your job, hey... We are going to give you a raise. We want to give you a big raise. Biggest raise we ever gave you before. But we, we just want to see how you perform. You're going to be going, going crazy. You're going to be going crazy with it. Really showing them like, hey, I deserve this raise. Even if you've already shown them that you deserve the raise. And they know that your work has spoken for itself. Even though they know, you, yeah, you, you deserve a raise already. But if you haven't gotten it yet. See, and it could go two ways though. You could be like, man, I ain't feeling this no more. I'm a, I'll go get a raise from somebody else. You, you don't want to pay me? Okay, that's cool. Somebody else will. Or you could be like, all right, they, they just keep doubting me. Let me keep proving it to them. I love this company. I, I love working for this organization. I love the people that I work with. Uh, so I ain't really trying to go nowhere. So I'm going to keep showing them. But, hey, push come to shove, man. But I'm going to keep showing them, though. But we'll see. So that could be it with Lamar. So yeah, and and, and it's, it's business too. It's business. So yeah, that, that ain't surprising. But it is, it is a good point. Uh, he said also Lamar's touchdown pass to Mark Andrews off his back foot looked a lot like the drills Lamar posted on his Instagram, where the trainer was uh, falling back into Lamar's lap as he throws the ball. His pocket presence and ability to throw the ball with a tighter pocket around him has skyrocketed. I mean, he had to practice that. You know Ravens offensive line, so he you had, you had to practice them throws. With a super tight pocket around you. You ain't got no choice. Because that's realistic. Uh, he said, just a small observation I've made and shows how the work he's put in is translating on the field. And hey, it certainly is now. Oh, well, not now, but later on. It's time for all that work to translate to his pockets as well. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy.
shout out to engraving.